What's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. So right now there is a bit of, I guess you can call it Xbox fan meltdown going on. Um, and it's surrounded around the conversation and the discourse about around uh, Xbox possibly going third party. And the, the conversation about this has been building for a, for a while, weeks, maybe months at this point. And it's kind of started with conversations and statements from uh, like Phil Spencer and I think he's the CFO, Tim Stewart and different um, Xbox executives. Some things they've said have kind of, uh, you know, started up these uh, these rumors and, and conversations about if it's actually happening and if they're doing this. And I'm not going to lie to you, um, up until this statement that I'm that I'm about to talk about, which has set Twitter on fire. I thought most of the conversation was um, embellishment. I thought it was sensationalism, you know, just exaggeration, you know, because when any when it when it comes to anything in the console war and console conversation, everything is exaggerated. So that's why I haven't even really talked about it. If you notice, we haven't talked about it on Weapon Wheel. I haven't really brought it up, the whole third party conversation. Because so I'm like, the Xbox is not going third party. I didn't even take that news seriously i brought up like hi-fi rush and and sea of thieves possibly going to um other platforms but i didn't necessarily believe that xbox is going full third party i still don't necessarily believe it i think as of right now i think at worst a lot of their games may be timed exclusives and go to other platforms later on i still don't believe all of their games are going multi-platform. I don't believe that. I, I, I still think there is a, a bit of overreaction to this. I truly do believe that, right? I think some of this is a bit overreaction. So first, I kind of buried the lead there, I guess. So um, a few Xbox accounts are reporting this, and I tried to find the original source of this. I, I can't, but Idle Sloth 84 is a Xbox fan account and he, his stuff is like very reliable. Um, so it says, according to Zenimax, a Zenimax employee, Sarah Bond, who is now the Xbox director, will speak in spring to explain the change in Xbox's strategy regarding Hi-Fi Rush, Sea of Thieves and other games going multi-platform. Um, so where there's been smoke, there, there's some fire, right? And my take is, and I still stand on this, I don't think Hi-Fi Rush and Sea of Thieves um, and even a few smaller, less popular titles going to other platforms is the biggest of deals. I, I don't. Like, those games, those games are cool, but those aren't like the biggest AAA titles. Now, if we ever get to the point where, um, like, games like Halo, games like Gears, games like Forza, like, the tent pole staple xbox games that are literally synonymous with the xbox brand when we get to the point where you see those type of games on playstation or nintendo then i would completely understand the xbox fan base going full panic mode if you care about you know because some xbox fans may not care and don't care um as long as they get the games they don't care about it going multi-platform but a lot of the hardcores the, the hardcore fans this is not good news to them. Um, so, like I said, to me, if, if that happens, then they've jumped completely out the window and you might as well yeah, consider them a, a third party, um, a, a, you know, essentially a, a third party. Yeah, they're a third party developer that just as of right now just happens to also make make consoles, also make, um, you know, boxes. And. Uh, it's. Look, I don't know what people thought what was exactly going. There was going to be some consequence for Game Pass. There was all this talk about, you know, Game Pass is the future. Um, Game Pass is, is the product of games not being bought on Xbox. I, I need y'all to understand that. That is what created that's the catalyst that created game pass games not being bought on the platform them not being able to sell the numbers that 
PlayStation or Nintendo does. Regardless of the fact that Microsoft is very rich, richer than I don't and I don't get into like the the numbers and how much revenue or profit each company makes. I honestly have no idea. That doesn't that type of shit doesn't necessarily matter to me. Um but they're very freaking rich. They make more than uh, Sony, I'm sure. Do they make more than Nintendo? I would guess. Like I said, I don't, I don't know. They're very rich. Um, but that doesn't seem to matter. They still seem to be beholden to the same things that other platforms are beholden to. And it's the fact that they need to make money. Um, so that's, that seems to be the the basis of a lot of their decisions and why they're going multi-plat you could assume hi-fi rush even though it was for for most accounts a good game and it, it i'm sure it performed okay in game pass and it, i'm sure it sold some copies out of that it didn't light the world on fire it's not a super mass appeal commercial fully commercially successful game um sea of thieves is a live service game and that did uh do very well but it i'm sure they realize it can do better on other platforms, you got to realize that in comparison to the Nintendo and PlayStation platform, Xbox is niche. It is. It is a niche platform. You, you can look at the numbers of the consoles sold. In comparison, they're the smallest as far as the fans go, as far as people own their, who play their games and who own their console. So by keeping the games on, the fact that we're not pushing our console anymore. We're not trying to sell our console anymore. And uh, everything is about Game Pass. That's a very small, like, bubble they're essentially keeping their games to. And it's on PC, sure. But I've said before, I've said it before. If you're trying to, the most reliable customer is your customer. It's not anybody else's customer. That, and that, that remains true, but, but, Especially with the fact that you're now training your customer not to buy games because that's what you're doing with Game Pass. That's what Game Pass does. It trains and tells your customer, don't buy our games. That's what you're telling them. Don't buy our games. Don't support our product. That's what you're training. That's what you're kind of brainwashing them into doing is to not being used to buying anything and supporting anything a la carte only in a subscription service. So now you've kind of watered down and weakened the buying power of your own customer who is the most reliable customer because they're used to getting something in a service and not used to having to buy it. So you can, my point is you can't rely on the, the PC user. As I've said in many times, the, the PC user, and I'm a PC gamer myself, but the PC gamers I'm talking about are very, very selective. They don't necessarily care about their priority priority when it comes to buy when it comes to playing a game is not where can I save the most money? That's not their priority. They their priority is where, and that's Steam. Because for example, I have no problem with the Epic Game Store. I think the Epic Store, Game Store is great. Um, but there are some PC gamers out there where a game could be full price right now on Steam and free on the Epic Game Store. They're going to pay for it on Steam. They don't care if it's free. They're like, no, I'm going to pay 60, 50, 60, 70 dollars on Steam to, to play that game only because I prefer to be here. So that's if you that's who you're relying on to grow Game Pass. And that's kind of been their strategy. Yeah, that's not going to work. So that that's failed. That's that's I'm not going to say it's failed, but that's why, you know, that subscription services, as reported, have completely plateaued. We even though, once again, Microsoft has all this money, um, they can probably um, subsidize Game Pass forever. They still probably have goals of what they where they want subs, um, Game Pass to reach. It probably hasn't hasn't ever touched 40, 40 million yet. Probably hasn't ever touched 40 million yet. Got to got to realize that, right? It's probably somewhere in the at the most high 30s, and it and it goes up and down. There's ebbs and flows, so it's not like this stable thing that stays anywhere. Um. So it, it, it's it's like 
that you you need this thing to keep growing and 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 that's not essentially working for them right it, it's plateaued and then you've essentially completely killed your console sales um by telling people by going with this strategy of telling people hey you don't need to buy our console you don't need to buy our platform just go play it some go play it somewhere else go play it on pc or or whatever wherever it's 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 available or going to be available that's not a great strategy um because now you you weaken you weaken the console um and its ecosystem a little bit telling people it's available here also if you want to go here is one thing telling people yo don't buy our joint at all and the console is irrelevant um is another is another thing because like microsoft being used to you know selling software uh non-gaming software in that manner they, they're trying to do that with games but there's a consequence to that maybe they don't care right because to them it's somebody playing it's engagement it's money it doesn't matter to us but to the hardcore gamer once again that's not that's not o okay with them so it, it's like they placed all their bets on this one thing, which is Game Pass, because because that's the that's the identity of of, of Xbox now. It's just Game Pass, uh, and it and it's it's their whole their whole identity is and their whole selling point is hey, you don't have to buy our game. You don't have to buy our game. That that's our whole identity now. There there is not necessarily anything unique. It's not like the the games itself that's the that's the games itself it's not is not like the unique identifier with a, a Xbox when you think of Xbox you don't necessarily think of one game or one type of game or any standout games or IPs really you might be able to still argue Halo uh, or Forza or something like that but it, it's not like that anymore it's literally just Game Pass and that's not that's not really a, your your subscription service in gaming can't really be your identity. That's not a good identity to have. It, 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 it's, it's not. So it, it's, they're kind of floundering because they've, they have all this mixed messaging um, coming from Tim Stewart and Phil Spencer and, and all this stuff. They're, it's confusing the fan base. You know, what direction are you going in? Because one, one day you say, oh, no, our games aren't going somewhere else. And we hear from somebody, oh, they are. And then it's not. And then they are. It's like, bro, what? What is the messaging here? What what is the what is the truth? What's the truth? And it's like, bro, it's like the Xbox fan base, not only them, but this is the topic of Xbox and Game Pass right now because PlayStation fans do it too, where they just believe everything, um, like every narrative that's created by the overlords. Console sales don't matter. Oh, only in gate. Oh, oh, uh, hard uh, software sales don't matter. Console sales don't matter. It's only about engagement numbers. If y'all had any brain or any spine of your own, you would not just just all willy nilly believe all these narratives that they are throwing at y'all. There is no way you, you can get me ever to believe that engagement numbers specifically in a single player game will ever be more important than actual sales. That is madness to believe that. And some of y'all really be falling for that. Game Pass is not this all alluring product that Xbox fans think it is. It's not. It is a glorified backlog. It's a glorified backlog that saves you some money. But the, but the fact, y'all got to realize, saving money is not the biggest priority for most people when it comes to games. It's not. It's not they they you got to understand they met y'all where you were at. They met y'all at the point where you were not buying games. Not the rest of the industry, the rest of the industry, they were buying games. The other platform, they were buying games on, on, the, on those other platforms. Xbox said, our guys, our fans are not buying games. So let us meet you in the valley of not buying games and offer this service where you don't have to buy games. That's where they met y'all. So everybody else was still on board with buying games and saving money is, was not their, is not, 
I'm not saying saving money is bad, but when you make it the priority of your hobby and and like the biggest, most important thing, that's an issue. That's a problem. That's an, that's not that's not a great way to look at your hobby. Saving money is is OK. I look when 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 a game comes out, I definitely look for a way to, to save on it. But is it is it my main the main thing I think about when it comes to buying games? No. If I got to pay $70 for a game, bro, I'm just going to have to pay $70 for a game. It is it is what it is. So most people are just going to buy what they want. Most people don't want to sign up for a subscription service with hundreds and hundreds of games that they are never going to touch just to play one, two, maybe three games that they might get a di- that they're essentially getting a discount on. That's all Game Pass is. You're never going to play the majority of games in there. You're not. So all it's it's a it's a virtual backlog simulator that you're paying monthly or yearly for. So most people don't care about saving money that much. Most people don't care about the library in Game Pass. Most people just want to buy the individual games that they care about and call it a day. Y'all thought that PC gamers, Nintendo gamers, uh, PlayStation gamers were going to just run in flocks, run in droves to the Xbox platform because y'all saved a little bit of money? That wasn't going to happen. And I said this years ago when the, the game Game Pass conversation was at its height and everybody thought, oh, when Call of Duty, if Call of Duty goes to game, oh, everybody's just going to run. Like, bro, it's not the it's clear. And, and if if you don't believe me, it's it's cl- evidence shows evidence shows it. If saving money was the most important thing to gamers. Xbox would have way more subscribers. Clearly, that is not the focus. That is not the priority. That is not the most important thing for gamers. On the on the if if gamers had to make a list of the most important things when it came to them and their hobby of gaming, I'm sure saving money is on the list. It is not number one, two, three, four, or probably even five, depending on who you ask. But it's not. And you got to realize, like. Dudes thought Game Pass and subscription services were the future when the least popular platform was doing it, was leading it. Not that Xbox is the only one doing it, but they're the only ones making it their absolute identity where every, every decision we, we make is literally just based on on Game Pass. They're the only ones doing that. The rest of the industry, this is what this is what's so so delusional about about Xbox fans that I never understood with their you know with their champion of Game Pass is 90% of the industry is essentially saying the model of buying games is what we are still going by. Xbox is the 10% less than that saying, hey, it's all about subscription service and subscription services are the future. And y'all believed it. If and I always ask people this question, I'm like, if, if subscription services are so in demand, if it was the future and, and if it was the second coming, why? Why isn't Nintendo doing it? Why isn't? And I'm not saying just have a subscription service like Ubisoft has that EA has that. Why are they not making it their identity? and? And, and, and essentially making it their brand. You don't think if it was that, if, if others saw that, that they would follow suit with exactly how Microsoft is doing it? You don't, you don't think they, they, if they believe that, they would do the same thing, but they don't. So I, that's the part that I never under, like, because listen, I'm a PlayStation fan, but if we had to pick one publisher that is literally like, the uh, essential epitome of success and how to how to make and sell games it's nintendo it's nintendo they've had a few blunders here and here and there in the general in, in generations but when it comes to making 
and delivering products and how to sell them, Nintendo is the model. And Nintendo's and, and Nintendo is the model to egregious levels because they don't even lower their price in the, a lot of their games. So Nintendo literally said, we are going to sell these games and you are going to buy them. Point blank, n that's it. Th there's no conversation. We're going to make these games. Buy them or don't. And people buy them. And, and that's the law in the industry by most accounts, and that's the law that people abide by. So Xbox being the smallest brand amongst the, the three or whatever, why did you think in the, being the minority that you were going to lay down the law, that you were going to suddenly change the landscape and, and, and lay the rules and the law and the parameters of how this works? You're not in charge. Xbox and Microsoft are not in charge of gaming. They're not. At, 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 if we're being real, it's Nintendo. So that's the delusional part. Like, bro, that the fact that y'all thought y'all were in charge and make the rules is insane. You're not in charge, bro. You don't, you don't, you don't make the rules. Why did you think you did? Microsoft dangled a little carrot in front of you, say, hey, you could save a little bit of money, and suddenly y'all brains just, fl just fell out y'all ears. It, and, and now y'all are finally coming to like, y'all are uh, suddenly having an, an epiphany and coming to a, a realization that, hey, this might not have been worth it. If you care about this, once again. If you care about a console having exclusives and having an identity and, and, all, and all those things. If you, cared, if you cared about the games individually themselves. I, I t listen, and, and, and people didn't want to listen. I told people, when I saw, when I saw fans, and it's, it's clearly specifically Xbox fans, when I saw them saying, that they weren't going to buy games. Games that were worth it, by the way. Clearly worth it. Cheap games to begin with. I remember specifically Death's Door. Death's Door was like a $15 game. And I remember seeing a comment that said, I'm not buying this unless it goes to Game Pass. I knew it was it's $15. Okay, and that's an indie game. Cool. But then we started, we started say, seeing like games that were clearly worth it, quality AAA games, and people being like, I'll wait till it goes to Game Pass. That's their mindset now. It's not, their, their mindset is not, I should buy this game. I knew it was over. I knew, I said then, some shit gonna hit the wall. I don't know what it is, but something is going to hit the wall and bounce back, and it's gonna have negative effects. And I said, the industry is going to, will, will always like, it's that nature will always heal itself, right? It, it's like gaming um, Darwinism, I've called it before. Game Pass is a, dis, is a, is a disruptor, but my, one of my issues I had with it and is, is I, I think it essentially gave, it essentially kept IPs, games, and, and, and projects, it brought them to fruition and it created games that otherwise wouldn't exist, otherwise wouldn't get played. That's the concept of Game Pass. And some people thought, oh, that's great. Is it? Is it? Because the industry will tell you when something is not wanted. Nature will heal itself. It will course correct. It's the same. It's like the same conversation with um, games as a service. Now, I'm not against games as a service. A lot of people are. But I believe that if games as a service is this thing that should die off and should not exist, it will, nature will essentially correct it and it will die off and the industry will course correct. It will change the path that it's going eventually. It may take a little while, but eventually anything that is bad for the industry, it will die off. I believe that. Y'all remember, um, what was it? It was like, uh, there was a lot of bad practices in online gaming, uh, like loot boxes. You damn near don't see those anymore. 
Um, what's the little code, the little online code that used to come in the multiplayer games? Um, I forgot what they were called. You don't see those anymore. A lot of these practices die off because the industry kills the, 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 the fan base, the consumers eventually kill them off. So things will, the, the industry will always choose what works for it and what doesn't. Now, I, I think that subscription services plateauing is a, is a sign of that. And it's so funny because every other subscription service in other industries and in like music, movies, TVs, most of them are not profitable or have or took very, very long to be profitable. I, I don't know which ones are profitable at this point. I think I heard Spotify might have reached profitability recently. I'm not sure. But most of them were, weren't and have not been profitable, right? And I get Xbox says that Game Pass is profitable. Phil Spencer has made that claim. I'm, I'm, listen, the man said it. He knows the numbers. I don't. But what I will say is I find it very strange that Xbox fans looked at the industry, all the industries around, and, 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 sud and for some reason felt that Game Pass was going to be special. Game Pass is different. When it should be even more, there should be even more consequences and repercussions, and sub a subscription service for gaming would be even harder because you got to realize get, games cost way more to make than these movies or, or, or music. Games are interactive. Games take much longer to consume. It's very, very different. Like, I can, when you buy an album, like, or like when you listen to an album, you have a, in Spotify. Albums, the longest album you, you'll probably listen to is like an hour. Most of them are like less than that. A game, a game, your average game is what at this point? 10 plus hours? 15? So, people subscribe, pe like, there's just less of a need for people to have a subscription service for gaming when you have, when time is a factor and you can consume a lot more TV, movies, or music from a subscription service in the same time that you can consume a game. In the time that you play one game, you could probably get through 10 albums, 10, t 10 episodes of, of, of your of your favorite show sometimes 20 episodes of your favorite show so it's like what you're getting back from a subscription service in, in in a in a game is very diminishing it's not the same thing it, it damn near don't be worth it it's the land of double a games right it's not to say that there aren't some tri great triple a games that come to that come to it listen liza p was my game of the year last year and it was in game pass but when you look at the highest rated best selling games each year it's not a whole lot of game pass games in there the games that the mass consumers want the most that people want the most they're not in game pass those are not the games that people want the most they're not in there look look at the look in, look at the list of either highest the, the highest rated games each year or the highest selling games each year. It's not that there's none of them in Game Pass, but most of them are not. They're not not day one. Not day one. So subscription services are great for catalogs, older games, but that whole day one thing outside of Xbox first party, all you're getting is Is, is some like, at best, some maybe decent double A games that people probably would have waited for a sale anyway. You're not, you're not getting the top of the top quality games. You're not. 
Sorry, to, sorry to, to inform you. You're not getting the best games in here. And let me say that I'm not saying that like Xbox's and Microsoft's strategy is wrong. Not saying it's necessarily. I, I think they were a little bit too overzealous and aggressive when when it when they've gone all in on Game Pass and like kind of ignored everything else. But I don't think their strategy was wrong. They were just a little bit too you know overzealous. Um, but I think the Xbox fan base, as I've always said, they're like dying for validation um, because so many of them wanted, oh, PlayStation, do this, PlayStation, do this, PlayStation, do this. And it's like all the things you wanted were just what Xbox is doing. And you're claiming, oh, this is the one and only righteous path. Why does this have to be the only path? Why can't both be doing what works for them. And once again, if I had to make an argument that what PlayStation was doing was right, I would simply point, as I, as I have already did, to the rest of the industry. So if the majority is doing something and that's been what's longstanding, yeah, I'm kind of going to agree with what everybody else is, what the majority is kind of doing. But the whole push from Xbox fans, oh, we want PlayStation to do this. That was nothing but validation. And, and, and I kept saying that some of them try to make it like, oh, no, we, 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 why, why don't you want uh, PlayStation games day one is in a subscription service? And why don't you want to save money? It's not about that. It's not, it's, it's, it's not, a, it's, it's at what cost? That's the problem y'all not, a, not thinking about. I want it's like the monkey paw situation, right? You know, the monkey monkey paw. Oh, I you wish for one thing, but what's what comes with that one thing? Okay, I want the Eagles to win the Super Bowl again, right? Okay, but at what cost? What what has to happen for that to happen? You want to save you want to save money in games. Okay, cool. What has to happen? For that to happen, nothing is just inconsequential and happens in a vacuum and in a bubble on its own. It has to affect other things. You know what I'm saying? Like, it 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 had it. That's the way it has to go. It can't just be isolated on its own. Doesn't affect anything else. Not possible. There are consequences of it. Um, and once again. This could all be blown out of proportion. Is this could absolutely be blown out of proportion? It could just be the smaller, um, lesser performing titles that go to other platforms. It could be, but to but to to uh, remedy that, y'all would probably have to start uh, buying these games and and playing them a lot more. Um, and y'all really probably don't have the fan base to uh, to do to do that enough to convince them to to change. Pro probably not. Y'all probably don't got you know got enough to convince them. Um, but it, it could be blown out of proportion. But I will say, just like PlayStation, for example, um, PlayStation games going to PC. Now I'm all for PlayStation games going to PC. I want all of their games go to PC, whether it's day one or whenever. Um, that doesn't necessarily matter to me. I think some games will go day one. Um, but from that, I think we know that floodgates open. That when one thing happens, it's usually never just one thing or a one-time thing. Usually, you know, there's more to, there's more to come. There's more to, there's more to follow. Um, there's, they're setting a precedent. And it's a slippery slope. So it's usually never a one-off. Like, it, it's usually not a one-off. If, if it's Hi-Fi Rush, if it's this game, whatever, Sea of Thieves, there probably will be more. But once again, unless it, unless it happens with the biggest AAA games, this is probably not that big of a deal. When that happens, um, and you're an Xbox fan, and you believe in exclusives, and exclusives are important, if if you believe in that, oh yeah, pack it up. Pack it up. It's over. It's it's done done.
Pack your bags, leave. It's over if that happens. And the last thing I'll say is there have been a lot of false prophets, a lot of false prophets on, uh, on the Xbox side who swear that everything that Xbox was doing in the direction that they were going in was the right way. Oh, this is the right way because I, because I know this and because I uh, got my GED uh, in night school and, uh, you know, I got a certificate in, in Twitter, un Twitter University and blah, 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 false prophets who don't know anything, never took a business class, don't have no degree in nothing. They know absolutely nothing. They just talk. They're just puppets. They're puppets. Literal. I don't use the word a lot, but they are literal shills. And y'all know who I'm talking about. Oh, I ran the numbers myself. I, I subscri subtracted one. I, 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 I added two. I did the division and I used the Pythagorean theorem. And look, I did the, the formula myself. And they don't know nothing. And these, and these are the dudes with the biggest audience who talk the most. They know nothing. And that's the problem. Never trust anybody who thinks they, who, who pretty much says they have the answer to everything and they know everything. I'll be the first one to tell y'all. I think I'd be right about a lot of stuff. But when it comes to certain things, I'll be like, listen, I don't, when it comes to like stuff with like financial statements and financial reports and I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. I, I, I could look at Xbox financial reports right now and I couldn't tell you nothing. I, I couldn't probably wouldn't even understand it aside from some basic things. I know game sales. I know games. I stay, I stay in, my, in my place. All these all-knowing prophets that swear they can break down anything and, and they were uh, breaking down, spending hours and hours reading 500-page documents in the Activision in, in the, in the, in the, uh, Activision Blizzard acquisition and, 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 so, and they, became, they were lawyers, they were mathematicians, they were nuclear physicists. Oh, all them dudes? Yeah. They looking pretty stupid now. I'm out of here, y'all. Um, hit the like button. I'll catch y'all on the next video. Follow me on Twitter. Watch Weapon Wheel. Uh, hit the notification bell. All that good stuff. I'm out. Peace.